on a brand new Josh Nason's Punch Out. It's a special edition of the show as I welcome actor Hope McCallany of The Iron Claw for an extended interview. Of course, The Iron Claw, the new movie on the tragic story of the Von Eric family. It comes out in theaters domestically on Friday, December 22nd. Holt and I talked about his role as Fritz Von Eric, of course, the patriarch of the Von Eric family, how he went into training for the role with WWE Hall of Famer Johnny Rods, how he did his research, whether he had any interaction with Kevin Von Eric, some of the Oscar buzz he has received for this role, and all kinds of other stuff. I really think you're going to enjoy this interview. I had a blast doing it, and I'm really excited for you to hear it. So let's get to it. Holt McCallany, a.k.a. Fritz Von Eric of the Iron Claw here on Josh Nason's Punch-Out. Let's start this right about now. Today's guest is a special one for me, an actor of nearly four decades. Holt McCallany has definitely been in something that you have seen, regardless of the genre or the way in which you watch TV. Maybe it was Alien 3, Fight Club, CSI Miami, Foundation, Three Kings, Blue Bloods, Concussion, Sully, Nightmare Alley, Tyson, or two of my personal TV favorites, Mindhunter and Lights Out, both of which I think are criminally underrated in this era of TV, he plays the role of Fritz von Eric in the highly anticipated A24 release, The Iron Claw, which finally hits theaters nationwide on Friday, December 22nd in the U.S. and this February in the United Kingdom. I welcome one of my favorite actors, Holt McCallany. To Thank Jackson's you so Punch much, Out. Josh. Very nice. Very nice to be with you. Thanks for taking the time. This is great. This is great. I have uh, I've been wanting to talk to you since Lights Out, and I'm glad we finally, now you're doing a wrestling movie, you're talking to someone who works for a wrestling website. I mean, what what a perfect synergy. This is a, a Christmas dream come true. Well, you know what? I'm happy to be with you, and I'm glad you... Were you able to see the film? Uh, yes, I saw it last week in Boston. Oh, okay, good, good. Yeah, because... um, And, of course, they're gardening during my interview. That's okay. Well, if there's a little leaf-blowing uh, background noise, I apologize, Josh. Uh, you know, uh, make it more real, I guess. That's um, true. Yeah, well, uh, uh, how'd you like the film? I liked it. I loved it. I, I I thought it was uh, it was emotional in the right spots. And I had known some of the story beforehand, um, as many have going to see it. But it was um, it mm. wasn't it, to me. Even though it's a, it's a wrestling movie, to me, it's a it's a family movie, but in a much different sense. If that makes any sense, you know, it just it was uh, this story that is almost too tragic for I think non-wrestling fans to believe they're like oh no way no way this happened but it actually did happen and uh you know fritz von eric was a huge part of that story well yeah you know i mean that's uh that's what attracted me uh uh to the role you know one, one of the things it was uh it was the fact that you know i mean i uh i had been a combat sports fan uh my entire life and uh you know josh um you know um no actor is right for every part mm -hmm. and you have to have a sense of what it is that you do well and where your strengths are and what you can offer a particular character mm -hmm. and there are you know um my mom my mom was a very well-known nightclub singer in mm -hmm. the 50s and 60s and um and i used to ask her sometimes you know how do you choose the material how you know which 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 songs do you know that you want to be in the act and what you don't want and what you, and she said you know Holt you have to be chemically attracted to a song this was my my mother, the late, great Julie Wilson, uh, uh, she used to say. And I, I think it's the same for actors. You have to be chemically attracted to a part and uh, to a role. And I know that that might sound a little obtuse. But what it means is that, you know, uh, you read a particular uh, script and you think about a particular character and you recognize something in the DNA of this character that you feel that you share. Now, you may be a very different guy than the guy that you're playing, but, you know, um, without sounding pretentious, you know, uh, uh, Orson Welles always said that in each of us, 
There's a poet and a priest and assassin and a revolutionary. You remove the things about yourself that don't correspond to the character that you wish to create. And what you'll be left with is the character. So what that means is that you're always trying to access something that is within you. You're never searching out here. Yes, you're doing research. Yes, you're doing preparation. Yes, you're educating yourself about the man, about, 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 about the context, about, about why he's considered important and what are the things that he accomplished in his life and how did he accomplish? Yes, you're learning all of that, but you're also trying to understand what's the essence of this guy when you distill it all down. Do you know what I mean? You know, mm -hmm. who, is, who is he? Is he really, you know, and people will all often ask me, you know, you know, what are my favorite kinds of characters to play and you know um I, I i always say that you know one of my one of my favorite writers uh was the late great norman mailer and norman mailer used to say that there are only two ways that a man can present himself to the american public you will either be some kind of a warrior or you will be some kind of a lover every character you will ever play will be at at bottom some variation on one of these two themes Obviously, I'm an actor who has more often played the warriors in our society. Mm -hmm. But if you ask me what is my favorite type of character to play, it's a warrior who is motivated by love. By and and that and that 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 could be love of, of many different things. It could be it could obviously it could be the love of a woman. It could be the love of a particular cause or idea. It could be the, the longing for to 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 arrive at a particular destination or to to achieve something of 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 of, of, of particular importance. I think Fritz von Erich was a warrior who was motivated by love and uh, by 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 the love for his family. I, I think he's a man who loved one woman his entire life. That was his wife, Doris. And I think he's a man who genuinely loved his sons and took tremendous pride in their accomplishments. And, you know, you'll hear people say very disparaging things about Fritz. And you'll hear people say that, you know, that that he was controlling, that he exploited family tragedy for commercial gain and for all of that, all the all these other kinds of criticisms. People have people have a lot of critical things to say about about Fritz von Erich. I did not choose uh, to see him in that way. I did a lot of research. I read a lot about him. I watched all his interviews. I watched all his old matches. I watched the way he interacted with his sons. And I believe that Fritz von Erich was a family man. Uh, I, I believe that he was a genuinely religious guy. I believe that he was a guy who truly, truly loved his sons. And as I said, took tremendous, tremendous pride in their success and was willing to do anything to help them accomplish that success. Yeah, I uh, I've heard you in another interview talk about Fritz, and really, because uh, there's so many people that have seen the movie and they just assume this, they kind of claim on this one thing of why isn't he more emotional and more like loving and 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 just the way he he showed love. It's a lot different than some expect, but you've really kind of uh, you've taken a different angle of that instead of saying, "Oh, it's just what some people think." Oh, it's this monster. He's this. He's this. But you've actually you took a different direction with it based on your research, and I thought that was that was interesting because during the film. Yeah. Is uh, it is a uh, it's a very serious role you play, a very gruff role. You you take on this character, this uh, this patriarch. You said you did a lot of research um, into yeah. this role. Did you? So you 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 delved into. You said interviews, some of the biographies. I assume some of the documentaries are out. Did you? How how deep did you go? Well, look, you know, um, um, I became obsessed with it. Um, you know, if you uh, 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 it, there's a particular podcast called Time Lapsed Fan, and these guys do the 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 uh, they have a a whole series of podcasts. It's like over twenty hours. It's oh, called I I know those guys. I'm good friends with those guys, actually. Okay. Yeah. So 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 the lamentable tragedy of world class <laughs> championship. Yes. Yes. Okay. And when I say it's twenty hours, uh, that's an understatement. It's probably closer to forty because they go, they go year by year by year. What happened to world class for a championship wrestling in nineteen eighty one, in nineteen eighty two, in nineteen eighty three? They break it down by year, and um, it's an absolutely fascinating. Uh, podcast. And so I give a shout out to those guys. Now, they're not fans of Fritz. 
And I think that, um, you know, when I say that you hear a lot of disparaging things about Fritz von Erich, when you, when you, when you listen to certain wrestling experts, I'm thinking primarily of these guys, but not exclusively, yeah. you know, um, um, and, and I understand why they come uh, to some of the conclusions that, that they do, uh, because not all of Fritz's decisions were good decisions. And um, however, um, you have to ask yourself what motivated those decisions. And I think that what motivated those decisions was, as I said, you know, a love for his family and a tremendous desire to see his sons be as successful as they possibly could. So, and, and a willingness to do anything within his power in order to achieve that. So that's what, that's, that's what I think, um, you know, uh, again, there are people out there that disagree with that, that assessment. Those gentlemen are among them, and they're they're not alone. Uh, but that's not how I chose to view the character. Mm. So I also read an interview that uh, you. So you, when you first got this role and you committed to it, you said, "All right, I'm going to go to a wrestling school." And not I only did. did you go to a wrestling school, you went to go see Johnny Rods, the uh, WWE Hall of Famer, Brooklyn's yep. Gleason Gym. Yep. Tell mm -hmm. tell me about that experience because I have uh, I have worked in wrestling before in the small promotions, uh, mm -hmm. seen trainers. The wrestling world is very colorful, and uh, yeah. I'm curious about your experience delving into this because I know before this you were not really a fan of it. You've come out of it to appreciate it more, but tell me about this experience going in and being Johnny Rods and, and kind of what you did. And I'm fascinated by an outsider coming into this very unique uh, artistic world. Yeah, so so uh, without question, my experience with Johnny Rods was the best experience uh, that I had, you know, um, uh, uh, in, in in on the entire picture, uh, because Johnny gave me more than I ever ever could have gotten anywhere else. Uh, you know, he's such a great teacher. He was such a great wrestler in his own in his own right. As you know, he wrestled everybody from Hulk Hogan to Bruno Sammartino. I mean, he was one of Vince McMahon Sr.'s favorite workers. You know, he wrestled uh, Kevin Von Erich in Madison Square Garden. You know, uh, he is a Hall of Famer. I would argue he's a legend in the sport, you know, and he's also an incredibly generous guy who gave me so much of his time and attention. And, you know, I went into his office and I said, Johnny, I'm going to play Fritz von Erich. And he said, the Iron Claw. And I <laughs> said, yes, sir, I'm going to be the Iron Claw. And he said, OK, well, then the first thing you got to do is wipe that smile off your face because Fritz von Erich didn't smile when he was in the ring. Fritz was a heel. And uh, quite accurately, you know, Fritz, as you know, as a wrestling fan, portrayed a Nazi, right? Mm -hmm. His name is Jack Atkinson. His name is not Fritz von Erich. Fritz von Erich is a character that he created because of the anti-German sentiment that existed in the 50s after the war, that if he walked out there, do you know what I mean, you know, as this arrogant Prussian, you know what I mean, that he mm -hmm. would be instantly, you know, recognizable as a heel. And he was great. And, you know, um, and what I came to understand through the work, you know, that and, 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 and you know, Johnny would regularly keep his wrestlers until one o'clock in the morning to, to, to wrestle with me. And that's not an exaggeration. And, you know, and he has some very talented guys in his wrestling club, all of whom have well, some of whom have really bright futures in, 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 in the world of professional wrestling. And it's going to be exciting for me because I have friendships with these guys to follow their careers. And he would say, to, you know, Teddy, get in there and wrestle Holt. You know what I mean? And then he'd give us some notes. OK, now wrestle him again. Ivan, get in there and wrestle Holt. Christian, get in there and wrestle Holt. Adam, get in there and wrestle Holt. You know, and one after another, after another, after another, he'd make me, he'd make me wrestle his best guys, and then he would critique me, and then I would get back in there, and we would do it again. And so eventually, you know, I brought in a camera crew. You know what I mean? We filmed all of the wrestling matches. We reviewed the tapes. You know what I mean? He showed me what he liked about what I was doing, what he didn't like, how it re how it resembled Fritz, how it didn't resemble fritz how it could be better you know because there's so many things that you have to understand uh, uh josh you know it's not just the athleticism and the endurance but you also have to be able you know to create you have to have the personality you have to have the charisma you know to be able to create a character that's going to capture the imagination of the wrestling fans mm -hmm. you got to be good on the stick 
Because if you're not, you're not going to be a star in professional wrestling. You just have to have all of those qualities. And so I came away from my training with Johnny uh, uh, with tremendous admiration and respect for the men who do this professionally, because it's a lot harder than it looks. Yeah. And, you know, the last thing I'll say on the subject is you can't wait for the film company to train you. They don't have enough time. And this is nothing against Chavo Guerrero. Chavo Guerrero is a great wrestler and a great choreographer and a great coach, and he helped me enormously. Um, but Chavo has limited time, and he's got Zach, and he's got Jeremy, and he's got a, a big matches that he has to choreograph, and we've got a lot of work to do. The 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 basics. Do you know what I mean when I'm when I'm talking about how to take bumps and how mm -hmm. to throw shots and you know and 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 acquiring the technique that you have to have in order to be able to get in there and credibly play a professional wrestler. Johnny Rods gave me that. So let me say unequivocally i am eternally grateful to the unpredictable johnny rods because not only was he a great wrestler he's a great teacher as well as just being you know just a great human being now you're no stranger to combat sports and neither are a lot of people that have stepped in the wrestling ring for the first time and then they take their first bump and they hit the ropes and they're like wow this hurts <laughs> and some don't come back for day two what was your experience like physically? I know you're you're 60 years young, just turned yep. 60 in September, and in tremendous physical shape. I will say that because I'm a question about that later. But how did your were you? I don't say were you surprised, but how did your your uh, your body hold up for the first few days of training and that uh, those first few bumps and so on? Yeah, you know, uh, it's 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 a great question. I mean, the truth of the matter is that um, it's a it's a grueling sport. And, you know, uh, and, 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 you know, you can't, you know, you can't gas out, you know what I mean? You can't blow up in there. You know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be able to, you know, some of these matches can be 10 minutes. Some of them can be 15 minutes. Some, you know what I mean? And, 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 uh, you know, you have to have the conditioning, you know, you have to have the endurance, but, uh, the, but, but, but you also have to have the technique so that, so that, you know, you can, you can take the bumps and not get injured because you got to come back tomorrow night and you got to wrestle all over every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights, week in and week out. We were mm -hmm. with Johnny and class isn't over until Johnny says it's over and he's got the keys to the place. And like I said, he'll stay there till one in the morning if you know and and we often did and so you know um uh that was the basis and because he knew the von erics because he has an encyclopedic knowledge of the sport because he had wrestled kevin you know what i mean i mean and he knew you know he knew he knew he knew he knew everything about the 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 story there's the anecdotes that he could share with me you know the insights that he could give me um but really all of that was 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 crucially important, but it was the training. It was the training. It was allow. It was welcoming me into his wrestling club and allowing me to wrestle his best guys, and then they also become your instructors too, because they have a lot of time. They have a lot of ring time. These are guys who, just the way that I aspired to become a professional actor, they aspire to become professional wrestlers. They want to be in, in AEW. They want to be in, in, in the WWE. They want to wrestle in Japan. They want to, you know, they, 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 they've devoted their lives to this, and they've learned a lot. And so if I make a mistake, yes, Johnny will critique me. But before he gets the opportunity to one of his one of his more experienced wrestlers might say, hey, you know what I mean? You know, you're, 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 you're making this harder than it has to be. You know what I mean? You know, yep. you, you simplify this. You can and, you know, and, and, and I'm just a sponge. I'm just there to soak up as much knowledge as I can, you know, you know, and not miss a class, just be there, be there because the day is going to come when I'm going to have to get on the plane and I'm going to have to get to Baton Rouge and I'm going to have to start the, the choreography with, and you know, and I, I, I like to, you know, do as much as I can myself, meaning that I'll choreograph an entire, you know, match along with Johnny's help, along with the help and then present it to Chavo. And say, and say, what do you think? Ch and then Chavo will say, I like this part of it, but we're going to cut this. We're going to, we're going to, you know, focus on, on, on this. And then, you know what I mean? He'll make mm -hmm. adjustments. 
do it. He'll, he'll, you know, he'll put his touches on it. He's got a very experienced eye. And then we present that to Sean. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and, and then Sean will make his adjustments. So by the time we get to Sean, you know what I mean? I've been through the wrestlers at Johnny's club. I've been through, you know, you know, you know, the advice from Johnny Rods. I've presented it to Chavo Guerrero. I've gotten notes from Chavo Guerrero. Chavo's helped me tremendously. And now I'm getting notes from the director, but there's a whole process that you go through. You just don't show up on the set and turn to Sean Durkin and say, uh, so what do you think? Uh, you know, uh, what should I, what should I, what should I do here? No, 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 no. Yeah. I have my version of what I'd like to do. And, you know, and, and I'm going to present that for Sean and then Sean will make, uh, you know, make adjustments to it as he sees fit. Yeah. How much interaction, if any, did you have with uh, Kevin Von Eric through this process? Well, look, you know, um, I, uh, I, uh, uh, my one regret, if I have a regret, is that I never got to meet Fritz von Erich because Fritz um, died in 1997. And, you know, that would have been the ideal thing, which would have been uh, the ability to just go and and sit with him and ask him questions and what he was thinking at certain times in his life when he made certain decisions and just try to get inside the man's head to study him, to study his mannerisms, to study, you know, you know, his expressions, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. try to try to uh, try to uh, uh, absorb as much of that as possible. It wasn't possible. Fritz was dead. The next best thing is to meet his son and have that whole interaction with his son. There were legal reasons, which the studio would probably prefer I not get into, that prevented me from meeting. I made the request. And I was told no. I said, can I meet and talk to Kevin Von Eric? And I was told no. So I didn't, unfortunately, get to meet Kevin um, until the film was already made. But I'll tell you something, Josh. I saw a video clip of, of Kevin Von Eric uh, uh, right after he had seen the film for the very first time. And he said, I can't believe they found an actor to play Fritz. I didn't think they could find a guy, but they did. And that meant more to me than any uh, good review could have could have meant because he knew Fritz. He he was Fritz's son. And if he was satisfied with my interpretation of of of, of his father uh, and of that character, then that was good enough for me. Yeah. Um, about a month ago, only a few minutes left, about a month ago, uh, Variety put out some predictions for Oscar nominees. And I saw you share that on your Instagram that you were in their next in line group in the top 10 for potentially a, uh, an Oscar nomination for yourself for your role in this movie. Uh, is it? Uh, I found that interesting because I always wonder if actors are like, I don't want to even mention it in case it jinx myself or anything like that. But I took it more like uh, you're very proud of this role and what you did. And if it's seen as one of the year's best in film, then so be it. And, and uh, I, I, I sense you're very proud of this role. And, uh, and, and that, you, you know, you know, you know, Josh, I, I really appreciate you mentioning that because, you know, um, if I bring it up, it sounds a little self-serving, but if you bring it up, it allows me, uh, you know, to, to answer your question, which is, yeah, in, in Clayton Davis's first, uh, article, um, he actually picked me in the top five. You know what I mean? As as a, as a, as a, as a, as a likely nominee. Do you know what I mean? Not right. you know, in the, because there's only five slots, right? It's a particularly challenging category this season because in the supporting actor category we have Robert De Niro for Killers of the Flower Moon, we have uh, uh, Ryan Gosling for Barbie, we have Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer, we have uh, uh, my friend Mark Ruffalo uh, for Poor Things, we have a, a a very exciting young actor named Charlie Melton. You you know, for May, December, you know, um, then there's Willem Dafoe, do you know what I mean? Who's another old friend of mine, you know, um, it's, uh, it's, a uh, it's, it's tough competition. This, if there were 10 nominees, I think I'd be there. Mm. Uh, the reality on this occasion, uh, is that I might come in at number six or number seven, which is just about as good as being, you know, number 120, but you know, uh, uh, just the fact that I'm in the conversation is uh, is very flattering, and um, and I'd like to think that if the movie 
uh, is released and 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 is a big commercial hit, which I hope it will be, which I think it deserves to be. Um, that maybe you know uh, that might help me, you know, uh, uh, to to rise a little bit, you know, in the rankings. Um, and, uh, and, and, and maybe a nomination, um, 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 is still possible for me, despite the tough competition that I just listed. If that happens, Josh, I don't know how to express to you how the emotions that I would feel, how, um, you know, the, 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 the just the, 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 you know, the the gratitude and 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 the, the 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 just the degree of 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 personal satisfaction um that that would because it's been a long career and it's been a career with a lot of ups and downs and it hasn't always been easy and there were times when i really struggled and times when i couldn't get a job so if it was all leading to me finally being recognized for a part like this in a movie like this um, that would be uh, a truly, truly um, enormous and 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 uh, an exceptional moment in my life. Having said all that, the last thing I'll say is, it's about the journey. It's not about the destination. Um, you know, and um, if it happened once, if I can be in this conversation this time, I can be in it again because I'm the same guy bringing the same skill set to another project down the road. I'm a long way from being finished. Right. They, they 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 haven't even heard really from me yet. My 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 best years, I'm just coming into them now. And um and you're gonna see a lot more of Holt McCallany over the next few years. I can promise you that. And uh and hopefully, you know, um I'll be in films that are as good as Sean Durkin's film. Yeah, that's a great wrestling promo. I do have one question if we're running out of time. It'll kill me if I don't ask this. I'm such a huge fan of lights out. 10 more than 10 years have passed since that show came out. People can still watch it on FX on Hulu. Uh, would you, did you, would you do anything differently looking back on it? I mean, it was a solid 13 episodes. I'm sad that it ended. Would you looking back, would you have done anything differently with the show? Or is, or is that as it sits now, are you happy with it? Um, you know, um, it's a, it's a great question. I mean, I think that, uh, 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 you know, I left, I left, I left some blood in the ring on that one buddy you know um i trained hard for that i fought hard for that um i did as much training as much research as much actual physical fighting for that part than i did for any other part in my entire career i don't have regrets because i know that i did everything humanly possible to make that show a success. And if it didn't connect with audiences, I think it was just a question of bad timing. And if it, you know, if the show came out now, I bet you'd be a hit. Mm -hmm. I really believe, it. I, I mean, too. you know, uh, 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 or at least it would be, it would have enough viewership that it would meet the threshold necessary for renewal. And we and I'm very happy for my friend uh, Jeremy Allen White, who is absolutely superb in uh, the Iron Claw, and of course has the hit show on the FX. Bear. Yes, which is where I was with Lights Out. You know, his show connected with audiences. Mine didn't, although it was critically acclaimed. Um, but I'm glad that you asked me about that show because it has a special place in my heart, and um, I've never had more fun. And I was deeply grateful uh, to John Langreff, who runs FX, an incredibly wise uh, executive, you know, you know, a really, really smart guy. He loved the show. He wanted to renew the show. But television is about advertising. And, you know, it's about numbers. You got to get the you got to you got to hit a certain number. And I was maybe 25 percent short of where I needed to be. Do you know what I mean? In order mm -hmm. to get. Dude. And, 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 and yeah, it, it, it was painful because I love the show. You know, I love the sport. You know what I mean? I loved the people that I was working with. Uh, but you gotta, you gotta, you gotta pick yourself up and dust yourself off and go on to other opportunities. And since then have been things like Mindhunter, 
uh, yes. incredible was, show. Uh, yep. Another incredible show where I got to work with, you know, the guy that I think is the best filmmaker in Hollywood and, 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 and film and a film like the iron claw in which I got to play uh, what I believe is a very memorable role. And we even had a conversation about me getting a possible Academy award nomination. I'm not saying that's going to happen. Do you know what I mean? But even the fact that you're able to bring it up to me, Josh, and we're able to have that conversation um, is, 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 a, is a wonderful thing. So, you know, I have a lot to be grateful for. And, uh, and that's what I try to do is just to stay humble, you know, um, stay focused, you know, uh, keep trying to, uh, to give my directors the best work that I can give to them. And uh, if I can continue to do that, um, I think there are a lot of terrific roles in my future. That's right. And this comes out this Friday. It's like a fight week, right? It's all the build, all the Absolutely. anticipation. The event this day is Friday. coming up just days away. Hold McCallie. I, this want, yeah, I want all those fans out there. I want you to go on opening day, December 22nd. Help us have a good opening weekend. Uh, we want this film to be a big commercial success. It's got everything it needs. Um, so, so thank you, Josh, for your support. You know, thank you, you know, because you're obviously a very knowledgeable guy, not only about the sport, but you've taken the time to really do research about me and my career, your well, questions. I'm a big fan me. of yours. I'm a big fan of yours. I could have talked to you for two hours. I haven't even scratched the well, surface yet. One you know, day we'll one day we'll do a, a lights out specific podcast. We'll go through I, every I, I, episode, all that stuff. We'll make it happen. Okay. Anytime you want, buddy. It was all a right. pleasure. Holt McCallie, best of luck and uh I'm I'm looking forward to the response coming out this week. And I think you're really gonna I think you're gonna enjoy it. Well, thank you, Josh. Merry Christmas. Same All to you. Merry Christmas. Bye bye. All right. Big thanks to Holt McCallany for stopping by. That was a fun interview. Could have talked to him for hours uh, about different stuff. But, uh, yeah, that was a good talk on all the uh, the main questions I had, and I was greatly appreciative that I was able to get 30 minutes. He hasn't done a lot of these interviews, so I was uh, super stoked to be able to talk to them for an extended period of time, not just like a 10-minute you know, radio-style interview. And uh, it was fun. I'm, I'm still smiling the fact that I was able to do it and gratefully took the time. And, you know, the movie itself, I saw it, uh, what, last week or so. And, yeah, I'm interested to see what the – what the wrestling fans think and also the non-wrestling fans actually more importantly uh, i think when it comes to or when it comes to oscar buzz when it comes to kind of getting that um that that drive to get people to theater that real buzz that's where it's going to come down to wrestling fans are going to watch this and are going to pick some stuff apart which you know that's what happens with historical movies uh i will note at the beginning it does say inspired by true events which means it's not going to be a a, a 100% fact for fact retelling there are some things that are, you know, they take artistic license with, and uh, yeah, it's so that's going to happen, and and so just kind of be prepared for that. But to me, that doesn't take away from the fact that it's a really, you know, quality made movie. Um, you know, uh, Holt and Zac Efron are both the standouts for sure. There's a lot of good performances. Um, Maura Tierney, who I love as an actress, is also in this as well. She plays uh, the 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 mother, the Von Erich mother. I think it's. Trisha, if I'm remembering, I'm completely blanking out on that as I record this. But, and she has, I would like to have her a little bit more to do just because she's such a talent. But, you know, what she does, she does really well. Uh, the rest of the brothers are good too. You know, the one performance that threw me a little bit, and this is the wrestling fan side, was uh, a guy I really enjoy in The Bear, Jeremy Allen White, who is just physically does not look like Kerry Von Erich. He doesn't have the height or the the size or anything like that. So that is some artistic license. Zac Efron, who plays Kevin Von Erich, looks more like Kerry, but you know, I guess that's uh kind of how they <laughs> I guess that's kind of how they wanted to play it. But yeah, it's uh so that kind of threw me a little bit. And there's definitely some creative license with some of the stories around how he uh, hurt, uh, lost his foot or part of his foot or, you know, in this movie, there's a little bit of artistic interpretation there when that happened and all that. But I'm really interested in what the non-wrestling fans think about this movie. It is, uh, like I said, we consider it a, a wrestling movie as much as like it's a movie, a family movie, a movie about a family, a uh, much different family that I think maybe you or I might be used to. But it is a it's a tragic story and one that had more tragedy they didn't actually include in the film. But it was uh, 
I, I'm, I'm fascinated to see what the response is going to be. But it's a quality made movie. A24 does really good stuff, and uh, I certainly appreciate them hooking up this uh, this interview. But yeah, it's one worth seeing, and one that comes out this weekend. I don't think it's going to be a uh, you know, it's not going to be a big box office success. I don't think that. Um, you know, it's going to be, you know, top three of the year or anything like that. But, you know, for a small, uh, relatively small studio like A24, I think it has a chance to be pretty good, especially if it starts getting some of that buzz like The Wrestler got with uh, with Mickey Rourke, if you remember that movie uh, from not too long ago. So there's uh, this thing's got some legs to it, and it's got some star power. So I'm really interested in how it does, and interested in what the, uh, the feedback is as well. But, yeah, I greatly appreciate the time you spent this, uh, listening to this interview and the time you spent me on this podcast, which comes out uh, almost every week, I would say, for those that are new here. And I'm currently doing a pro wrestling year in review series. It comes out uh, a couple times a week, go month by month through pro wrestling. I'm also doing a four-part MMA uh, year in review series. So 16 episodes total, uh, doing through December all the way through the first week of January. So doing a lot of good stuff. Other interviews I do throughout the year, I talk to uh, Art O'Cal of uh, ESPN, formerly of WWE, earlier this year. That was a great interview. And uh, a bunch of other people as well. So yeah, it was. Uh, it's been a fun year, and this was a, a really fun interview. And something kind of came out of nowhere. Was able to get, and uh, was glad I was able to present it here. So having said all that, thank you for listening. And until next time, insert catchphrase here. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.